If you've ever been frustrated that so many of our guides only work on local networks, then today's episode is for you. We're going to be showing off port forwarding, which will enable those services to be internet connected on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Now, if you're not familiar with what ports or port forwarding is, then let's start there. Ports are channels that computers use to communicate together. And for example, a particular port might be using a certain protocol such as SSH or the secure shell. That is commonly assigned to port 22. However, it is important to remember that that's a standard, not a rule. You could SSH over any port, but 22 is the one people use most often. You're probably familiar with using it. If you've ever had a Raspberry Pi and wanted to connect to it from your laptop, then you might have set it up on the local network and SSH'd in. Now, when you do that, you will pull up a terminal on your laptop and you'll start typing and you'll do something like the local IP followed by the port and then your login credentials for the SSH shell. Now, a problem arises when you want to connect to that Raspberry Pi that's on your local network while you're off gallivanting somewhere else. Say, for example, you're on campus and you want to communicate with your Raspberry Pi back at home. You're not immediately able to do that because of the way your ISP works or your internet service provider. Essentially what they're doing is they provide one public IP to your router, to your home, and then that router is essentially blocking all of those ports from coming in and out of your house. So what you have to do is set up port forwarding. Essentially, it's a rule so that that router knows, OK, this incoming port to my public IP needs to be sent to this specific IP on my local network with this particular port. Now these ports don't have to match. You could have port 9022 coming into your public IP and then going out to a Raspberry Pi on port 22. Now, once you have that set up though, you would be able to go to campus and use that public IP of your router and connect to your Raspberry Pi. So if all of that sounds interesting to you, then that's what we'll be showing how to set up today. It's really easy. But if you get a little confused or you want a bit more explanation about ports and port forwarding, be sure to check out the article linked in the description below. Otherwise, you just need a router that supports port forwarding. And then we'll be ready to get started. All right, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is pull up a terminal, PowerShell, whatever window, depending on your operating system. And we're going to use that to determine the IP address of our router. Now, if you already know the IP address of your router, then you can skip this step. But let's just go over it real quick. Uh, for example, on Mac, you're gonna type this in, not menu, you're going to type in netstat-rn. And essentially, this is going to give us the IP address of the gateway. Now we should be able to see it up top here, yes. Uh, under the default and gateway, right here, this is the IP address of your router. Uh, if you can copy and paste that or get that otherwise, then that's what you're gonna need. If you're on an other system, if you're on Windows, then you're gonna do IP config slash all and uh, you should get a similar result and look for the default gateway and you'll see a number. And then you're just gonna go to your browser and you're gonna go up and you're gonna type that in and you should get taken to some sort of panel like this one, look exactly like this. It's going to vary depending on what kind of router you have, uh, but it's always gonna ask for username and password. If your internet service provider gave you one, then it's probably still the default credentials unless you change that. So you need to type in whatever credentials. If you don't happen to remember what it is, uh, you can try uh, nothing 
Uh, so just enter. Um, then you can try password, root, tor, and admin. Those are all pretty common ones. So I'm gonna do mine real quick. And then you should be able to log in. Uh, again, it's going to look different based on what operating uh, or what router rather um, you're using or your ISP provided to you. But usually somewhere up over here, there'll be a menu or a menu up here. And you're gonna wanna look for something along the lines of advanced. And it might even uh, be labeled port forwarding, such as it is here. So you'll just go click on port forwarding but you might have to hunt around a little bit. It should be pretty obvious if it is there. So I'll show you how, for example, we can port forward a Raspberry Pi. Now in the article, the example is essentially we've made a Raspberry Pi honeypot. And what we're wanting to do is we wanna open that up to the internet and we wanna make it available for people to hack. It's very important to remember that if you are port forwarding, you really need to lock your stuff down because it will get scanned by services like Shodan and you don't want it attacked. So be mindful of that before you go adding all of your ports to your public IP. So here I'm gonna click add. Usually there's a name, it says optional. Essentially you're just gonna put a name there to help you remember what this is. Uh, so I'll just do like pi, SSH, and then we're going to select the external source. Uh, so WAN is wide access, wide area network, uh, uh, the broader internet essentially. Although on some routers like this one, uh, you could be sending it to a, a VPS or a VPN or something like that. SSH goes over the TCP protocol. So we could just do that or we could support both. Now the external port, this is the port number that uh, you're going to be using when you access this from the internet. Um, it's really, really helpful to not use a common port. So for example, I said the convention for SSH is port 22. That's gonna get scanned in a heartbeat all day long because everyone's looking for open SSH connections or open SSH ports rather. So what you can do is you can vary it up a little. Maybe I wanna make it 6922, for example. I could make it uh, 1222, whatever. Now, the next thing you have to do is you have to designate which device on your local network you wanna send this traffic to. Now, you should know your Raspberry Pi's IP or uh, whatever device's IP on the local network. If you don't, usually you can go over in the router settings and uh, look for the DHCP and there you can click on that and you can see the local IPs assigned to each individual device and then you can just copy that. This particular router makes it kind of easy and gives me a list rather of just the IPs that have been assigned already. I happen to know that this one is the one I'm looking for, my Raspberry Pi. And then the internal port. Now this one has to be whatever it is on the device you're trying to connect to. So by default, Raspbian uh, has used the convention of port 22 for that. So I do need to make sure it is just port 22 there. And then once you're done, that's really all you need to do. You just click save and there might be some changes applied here. Maybe some routers might want you to reboot or something like that, but even that shouldn't be required all the time. That's all you need to do. Now, like I said, I can't stress this enough. Make sure your stuff is locked down, uh, particularly like this if you're port forwarding something like a secure shell, which could potentially be brute forced. If you do decide that uh, you don't need to use this anymore or anything like that, it's just a simple matter of clicking delete at least on this particular router, um, it should be very easy to reverse the settings on any other router though as well. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle, which features pen testing with OWASP, ZAP, 
WordPress Hacking and Hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst Prep Course. Check out the link in the description below. Now, port forwarding is a pretty powerful tool, yet as so many people like to say, with great power comes great responsibility. If you are going to be port forwarding, particularly for any length of time, then I highly recommend you lock your shit down because it is only a matter of time until a service like Shodan finds you and some random script kitty or malicious neighbor decides to try their hand at attacking your network through that vulnerable port. So definitely do everything you can do to lock down your network. If you're doing like we did in the video today and port forwarding SSH on a Raspberry Pi, you might wanna use a service like fail to ban, which will essentially rate limit the amount of sign-in attempts that can be made to the network. There are also a variety of other options you could investigate. If you want to learn more about that, or you had a little confusion about some of the steps today, then check out the link to the article in the description below. Otherwise, you can ask me questions or give me suggestions for future videos on Twitter at the underscore Hoyd. Otherwise, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and have a nice day.